And like I said, I apologize about whatever's going to come up on the screen. I don't know. I just think it's pretty fun, actually, because uh, it's showing the beauty and the scenic and the sceneries of Hawaii. So welcome to where I am. Welcome to my world. Praise God. Someone say hallelujah. Amen. Hey, guys. Well, I want to go into the, the prophetic word for the month of March. If you don't know me, my name is Ben Lim. And every single month, I give these prophetic words for the month of March. And some people, they uh, break it down or, you know, they criticize and say, you know, you're giving uh, like horoscope type of words. Listen, prophecy is not fortune telling. Prophecy is not horoscope. OK, but prophecy and, and, and saying, uh, declaring and prophetically giving a, a structure, an idea of what to expect and what's to come in a month, in a day, in a week. That is prophesying timelines and that is prophesying expectations. Listen, you, we need to expect something from the heart of God. We need to expect from Jesus. And prophets and prophetic people, prophetic company, we will prophesy uh, something into being so that you know what to expect just like a news channel when a news channel you turn it on and you know it says oh expect rain expect sun you know we, us as prophets we're given a spiritual forecast someone say spiritual forecast and i prophesy right now that your spiritual forecast is no longer going to be doom and gloom it's no longer going to be filled with darkness and sorrow but your spiritual forecast is going to be filled with fire power grace glory with the holy ghost your spiritual forecast is going to be filled with jubilee, with blessings, with riches. Your spiritual forecast is going to be filled with prosperity, with power, with promotion, with new grace. Come on, someone say new grace in Jesus' name. Amen. So us as prophetic people, we prophesy things into being so you know what to expect. And every good teacher, every good father, you begin to plan. Someone say plan. Which means that, you know, what we're doing is we're actually preparing ourselves because remember, God does nothing on the earth unless he first speaks it to his prophetic people, right? That is the word of God right there. God will do nothing on the earth until he first shares it, reveals it to his people, and we pray it. We see it. We pray it. We see it and we seal it. Someone say seal it. I tell you right now, the Lord is sealing your destiny in the name of the blood of Jesus. I'm telling you right now, the Holy Ghost is sealing your destiny by the power of God. The Holy Ghost is sealing it shut. It is confirmed. It will not be extracted. It will not be removed. It will not be changed in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Someone say Jesus has sealed shut my destiny. Someone say Jesus has sealed my future endeavor. Someone say, Jesus has sealed my fortunes, and nobody and nothing can take it, can steal it in Jesus' name. Someone say, amen. Bam, 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 bam. And listen, uh, before I get into the word, I want to welcome all of you. Do give some hearts, likes, and shares. I'm going into the prophetic word for the month of March. Wow! Rabo, expect great things, people of God. It is early here in uh, Hawaii. It is 7, 11 a.m. right now, 7, 11 uh, a.m. Hawaii time. And tonight I'm going to be ministering at Hanawa'i and Saturday evening and also Sunday morning. And I'll be back in his way in Los Angeles Sunday evening for Sunday evening service. Amen. Praise God. And also Monday to Friday next week, I will be in Arizona. So if you are in the Nevada, Arizona area, surrounding areas, come and see me. I'm telling you, there's going to be a, a glory outbreak. All right, not a coronavirus outbreak, but a glory outbreak. So I'm going to say amen. I declare right now. That coronavirus is destroyed, and I declare right now in Jesus' name that the Holy Ghost is, is releasing the power and the glory of God. Come on, shaka. Come on. It's going to spread faster than coronavirus. Fire. Bam. The good news is going to spread faster than this virus. Amen. It's going to go viral. Amen. The Holy Ghost is going viral in Jesus' name. It is contagious. Jesus is more contagious than his demonic Fear than this demonic thing in Jesus' name. Come on, someone say amen. Um, show bubble. So come and see me in Arizona next week, Monday to Friday. It's going to be an incredible time. All right, amen. Listen, guys, I want to go into this prophetic word for the month of March. I'm really excited because, uh, and do give me some hearts, likes, and shares. All right, uh, and as I always do, I'm going into the Hebrew and I'm going to break it down. Okay, because uh, we are entering into the month of Adar. Someone say Adar, okay? Someone say Adar, A-D-A-R, all right? In the Hebraic, we're going into the Hebraic month of Adar, A-D-A-R. And um, Adar, um, it, it actually uh, means God dwells, 
all right? It actually means God dwells, okay? Because in Hebrew, Adar is broken into two different Hebraic letters, Aleph and Dur. Aleph and Dur and Aleph many times means God because Alpha, Aleph, Bet, Alpha, Bet, Alpha and Omega, Aleph, Adar, all right? So Aleph or Adar is Aleph, Dur. So Aleph means God, which he is the head, he is the Alpha, okay? You follow me? We're, we're learning some Hebrew, uh, and our, we're tapping into our Hebraic roots today in Jesus' name. So Aleph means God, and Dur means dwells. So this is a month where God dwells. This is a month where God doesn't visit you, but he dwells in this month. And of course, he dwells in every single month, amen? He dwells in every single month, but this Adar, this month of March, it is a month where you're going to feel the habitation power of the glory of God, where he's going to inhabit you, where he's going to fully possess you. I remember somebody said a few months ago, how can God possess me? Okay, he's not an evil spirit. He possesses you because you are his possession. The Bible says that you are a royal priesthood. He has brought you out of exile, out of Egypt. So because you are his royal possession. Isn't that incredible? He possesses you. It's like it's like you're like a handbag, okay? It's not like saying that you're a tool or you're a thing that he uses. But it's like he possesses you. He's not going to let go. Oh, no, you never let go. Through the calm and through the storm. Something hallelujah. So this month of March, Adar, Aleph, and Dur, shoo, is the month where God dwells. And I'm telling you, people of God, this month of March, we're going to experience the inhabitation power of God. And um, uh, interesting fact uh, about Adar, um, Adar also means strength and power. Someone say strength and power. All right. Who here knows that wherever God is, there's power. Wherever God is, there's strength. Okay. So Adar is the month of strength and power. So in this month of March, experience supernatural strength. Experience the Aleph, which is the ox anointing. It's experience the power of Jesus. Because Adar is a month where God inhabits and he possesses you. And you're going to experience the fullness of the beauty and the power and the embodiment of Christ. Jesus. Some say amen. Some say I receive it. Okay. Uh, so Adar also means, uh, um, you know, in this month, uh, of Adar, uh, most of the rabbis and the Hebrews will say that uh, this is a month of great joy. Some will say joy. In fact, this is a month, Adar is the month of, of greater joy, where joy continues to increase. And of course, the book of Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm going to go into a Bible verse very soon, which is going to be our key verse for this month. Some will say amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength, okay? So uh, if I had to term or I had to prophesy and define this month of March, it would be March is the month of double power because the greater your joy, the greater your strength, the greater your power. I'm telling you right now, God is turning your sorrows into joy. I'm telling you right now, God is turning your mourning into gladness. God is turning things around, divine reversal, we're going to get into it, because Adar, March, is the month of Purim, some would say Purim, okay, it's the month of Purim, and that's why this whole month, there's so much celebration, and there's so much joy, and the Jews say that this Adar is the month where God inhabits, where there's strength of power, and Adar, March, is the month where the joy of the Lord ever increases. I'm telling you right now, joy, 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 Rabo Saba. The joy of the Lord ever increases. Someone say amen. So Esther 9.22, all right? Esther 9.22, somebody write that here. You know, Esther, uh, this is the month right now where uh, it is Purim. And before I go into Esther 9.22, that's another interesting fact of how prophetic and important this month is. Adar is also the, the month where Moses was born and Moses died, okay? It's a month where Moses was born and Moses died. What does that mean? It is the beginning of a new reign or a new law or a new government, and it's the ending of a government. I'm telling you right now, 
In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In the Isaiah 6, 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. What does that mean? When something dies, you see. When something comes to an end, you begin to see. When something finishes, there's a new beginning. I'm telling you right now, something has died, something has ended, something is finished, and you're coming into a new beginning. A new season, it's a new day, fresh anointing, robo sopo. So, Adar is the month where Moses was born and Moses dies. Isn't that interesting? It's not a coincidence, people of God. Uh, you know, shoo, karababa. it's the month where Moses was born and Moses dies. And do give me some hearts and likes and shares right now, because I am going into the meat of this prophetic word for the month of March. And if you're enjoying and receiving, someone say amen, give me some hearts, likes, and shares here. So I, you know, Adar, the reason why there's so much joy and increases in joy and there's strength and power is because it's the month of Purim. Someone say Purim. It's the month of Esther. I'm telling you the Esther call. The Esthers are rising. I'm telling you right now, I love the story of Esther so much. And I love the story of Purim so much. Whew, Shabbat. Because it is the story of where Esther was an orphan girl and where Mordecai, her uncle, were an orphan girl and an uncle together. Mordecai and Esther, this uncle orphan girl, this uncle orphan girl relationship, holy relationship, partnership. I'm telling you right now, God is bringing you divine and unusual partnerships where Mordecai and Esther, Ishtarte, or Mordecai and, uh, 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 Mordecai and, and, uh, I'm forgetting the Hebrew name of Esther originally. But Mordecai and Esther would come together. And this uncle and this orphan girl came together. And they saw a kingdom turn around. And I'm telling you, this is a month of strength and power and great turnaround. Where you're seeing the, the ending of a government and the beginning of a new government. Do you believe that someone said amen? i got to just Google that. Uh, Mm, that's right. The Hebrew name of Esther is actually Hadassah. Someone say Hadassah. Hadassah means uh, it's it's a beautiful purple flower in all of Israel. And man, I love that. And I've written extensively on it. I'll probably preach another Facebook Live on it because I love the story of Purim. I love the story of Esther and Mordecai. And we're going to talk about that. So Adar, March is the month of Purim. Someone say Purim. And what does Purim mean? Purim uh, means uh, the allotment of the Lord, the divine allotment. What does that mean? That means that the Holy Spirit is casting lots. That means that Jesus is casting lots. Psalm 16, uh, that the lots or the boundary lines would fall into pleasant places. Or in the book of Acts, when they're choosing a new apostle to replace uh, uh, to replace a Judas because Judas hung himself. So what did the apostles do? They cast lots. Okay, what does that mean? That means that there's divine allotments that are being released. So God right now is choosing your rightful inheritance right now. And in this month of March, God is releasing allotments. God is releasing inheritance. God is releasing what is due to you and due to your name. And no devil, no witch, no hex, no vex, no demonic government, no entity can get in the way of that. You are receiving your divine allotment. Nothing can get in between. And that is why in the story of Purim and the story of Esther and Mordecai, we see Haman hung, Vashti removed. I'm telling you right now, the Vashtis are being removed. What is Vashti? Vashti is a Jezebelic type of spirit that was adjoined to the king. Vashtis are being removed, which means that now there's an empty open space for you to possess, for you to come into, for you to dwell in, for you to inhabit. God is removing these people and you're coming in. So I'm saying, I'm coming in. And Haman was against 
Mordecai, have you ever experienced it when people are just jealous of you? Have you ever experienced when people are just angry at you? They're jealous of you. They're hating on you. They're always hating on you for no reason. And that was Haman. Haman hated the Jewish people with anger. He hate, And even today, there's a lot of people who hate Jews. Even today, there's a lot of people who hate Christians. They do not want the Christian Bible to prosper. They do not want Christians to pray. They do not want us to believe in the full and the whole Bible. Yeah, you could say this, but you can't say that. Oh, the devil is a liar. Oh, yeah, you could say this, but you can't say that. Oh, the devil is a liar. Stop trying to manipulate the word of God and the Bible, the Bible. Robo sababa. Even today, there's a lot of people who don't want Israel to prosper. I just saw yesterday that Bernie Sanders said that if he's elected president, then he's going to remove the embassy of U.S. out of Jerusalem and back to Tel Aviv or elsewhere. The devil's a liar. Why are you trying to, how are you trying to undo what God did? How are you trying to come against God's original design? How are you trying to come against the anointed of the Lord? Fire! So Purim means the allotment of the Lord. Someone say, I am receiving my allotment. Someone say, I am receiving my inheritance. Every single thing that is allotted to you by the finger of God, by the word of God, by the voice of the Holy Spirit, it will come to you in Jesus' name. Fire! So Purim is the allotment of the Lord because you see in the story of Esther and Mordecai and the king and Haman and Vashti that there's a tug of war. All right. Have you felt like you're in a tug of, tug of war? Have you felt like you're in a wrestle? Like you're always going back and forth. But today and in this month of Adar or in this month of March of strength and power where God dwelleth, where it increases in joy, where Moses was born and Moses died in this month of March of Adar, of Purim, you are going to rise up like Esther. You're about to rise up like Mordecai. And you're about to be honored, and you're about to receive recompense, and you're about to receive double honor in Jesus' name. Someone say amen. Listen, I want to go over to Esther 9.22. I'm going to give you two verses right now. Esther 9.22. Excuse me. As the time when the Jews got relief. Someone say relief. As the time when the Jews got relief from their enemies. And as the month when their sorrow was turned into joy. Someone say hallelujah. And their mourning into a day of celebration. Come on. He wrote them to observe the days as days of feasting and joy and giving presents of food to one another and gifts. Hallelujah. Someone say gifts to the poor. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so in this month here in Esther 9.22... Praise the Lord. And of course, Esther, in the original meaning, Eshtar, means star. You are about to shine like a shining star, like my hair. You are about to shine like a shining star, like the Esther that you are. Someone say amen. So Esther 9.22, the time when the Jews got relief, you're about to get relief from your enemies. And not just relief, people of God, all right? You're about to get recompense from the hardships, from the challenges, from the trials, tribulation. You're about to get relief from your enemies. And your sorrow is turning into joy. Someone say joy, which is your strength. And they're mourning into a day of celebration. Come on. And you're about to feast and have joy and give presents. Does anybody like presents? I'm telling you, Christmas has come early this year. All right, this is not Christmas, Mas Christ, but this is Purim, hallelujah. Come on, things are being packed around. Hey, presence of my enemies, I'll raise a hallelujah. Someone say bang, 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 fire, fire, fire. And the next verse I want to give you is Esther chapter 6, verse 3. My gosh, Esther chapter 6, verse 3. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? The king asked. Nothing has been done for him. You better keep reading with me. Esther 6. Whew. So now kings and people of prosperity and position of power, they're going to say, 
How can I honor you? How can I honor you, Dora? How can I honor you, Jude Lisa? How can I, how can I honor you? What has been done for you? Ho! Oh, in verse 5, the king's young man told him uh, what should be done. Wow. And we know in the story, Haman gets hung on the very vice, on the very thing that was set up for Mordecai's destruction. I'm telling you, it's backfiring, just like uh, the impeachment backfired, just like it was a boomerang effect, and just like the attack was so from the left and the libs, it's actually going to boomerang and backfire, and it's going to destroy the left and the libs and the Dems in Jesus' name. And not destroy people, but it's going to destroy their agendas and the political, spiritual mindset and uh, principality. So what, what happens here? Shoo! Wow. Verse 7. For the man whom the king delights to honor, let royal robes be brought, the king has, which the king has worn, and the horse that the king has ridden, and on whose head a royal crown is set. And let the robes and the horse be handed to one of the king's most noble officials. Let them dress the man whom the king delights to honor. And let him lead him on the horse through the square of the city, proclaiming before him, Thus shall it be done to the horse, to the man who the king delights and honors. My gosh, so what does this mean? That means that God is about to honor you all throughout the city. God is about to honor you all throughout the square. You're about to you're about to ride on chariots of flames of fire, and God is going to boast in you, and God is going to take great pride in you. Someone say Amen. You're about to have a new robe. Someone say Amen. You're about to have a new crown. Someone say Amen. Come on, new crown, new glory, new season, new hair. You're about to have a new robe, a new crown. You're about to have honor. Uh, the King is going to give you his own horse, and he's going to make sure that you get from point A to point Z in Jesus' name. Someone say Amen. That's what you can expect in this month, people of God. Are you excited? Are you receiving right now? Give me some hearts and likes here right now. And I want to tell you why this month of I want to tell you why this month of Adar and this month of Purim is so important. It's because it's a month of allotment and it's a month of turnaround and it's a month of deliverance and it's a month of celebration. It's a month where Esther's are arising, Vashti's are being removed. It's a month where Mordecai's are being honored. You are being honored. You have been waiting. You've been toiling. You've been praying. You've been giving. You've been sowing in the secret backstage, behind the stage, in secret. You are about to be lifted up. You are about to be recognized. You're about to be acknowledged. Come on. Come on. Due recompense is coming to you. Due honor is coming to you. Fire. Robo Satan. And not only that, but it came to the whole people of Israel. It came to all of the Israelites. Isn't that incredible? So Purim is the month of divine turnaround. It is the month of allotment. It is the month where your enemies are being destroyed. And it's a month where the king is releasing a scepter. I love this. I'm going to say this one more thing. And I'm going to say a few more. And one more. And then I'm going to start bringing it to a close right now. Because this is too good. And I'm going to pray over you. Of course, Esther sets up a great feast for the king because of a strategy. I'm going to have to do a whole new Facebook teaching, different Facebook, just talking about this. But I'm giving you the prophetic word of this month of March. Adar, someone say amen. When the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he was pleased with her and held out to her the gold scepter. That was in his hand. So Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. Remember, you do not come before a king unless you've been uh, you you've been uh, summoned. Someone say summoned. God is summoning you this month. Kings are summoning you. People are asking for you. People are inviting you in. Come on, you're being summoned in this month in Jesus' name to a higher level. To a higher court. You're being summoned by the king. And by the king of kings. You're being summoned. Someone say I am being summoned. So people. The king. Jesus is seeing you. 
and he's saying, I've seen how you prepared yourself in oils, you've consecrated yourself, you've purified yourself, you've made yourself ready for presentation. Your, remember, your purification leads you to glorification. And so the king now is taking notice and recognition and is, is extending the gold scepter that's in his hand so that you can come forth. God is summoning you from heaven above. I'm telling you, the Lord is about to knight you. God is about to knight you. God is about to summon you. He's calling you out into deeper waters, into higher realms, into new levels. He's summoning you and moving you out from ordinary to the extraordinary, from regular to, to irregular He's summoning you to a new place in Jesus' name. I'm telling you right now, people of God, this is the month of Adar, is the month of March, is the month of allotment of Purim, divine turnaround, allotment, power and strength, and double joy. Someone say amen. It's a month, <clears throat> wow, of vengeance. It's a month of fortune. It's a month of celebration. It's a month of honor. It's a month of reward. It's a month of recompense. It's a month of relief. Someone say relief. I want to pray for you right now as we close. This is going to be a great month of March. And I know I am a little early in sharing this prophetic word because March is still, uh, actually, we're not too early. March is just three days away now. But uh, Purim is uh, March 9th and 10th. Okay, so we're literally about two weeks away from Purim. And right now, God is setting things up to give you. There's an allotment of the Lord that's being prepared for you and your family. And nothing can come in between. Even when Haman tries to stir up strife and division, and when Haman tries to sow discord and contention, God is shutting it down. And God is giving you honor. And he's releasing his golden scepter. And he's saying, I've summoned you for greater glory. I've summoned you for great honor. And I am about to acknowledge you from heaven. And I'm about to bring you up to a new realm of grace. I receive that. Do you receive it? I want to pray for you right now. Because many of you, you have been processed. You've been going through a process of purity, of purification. People have been coming against you. They've been speaking evil of you. But this is a month where you celebrate because Haman will be hung. Come on, there's a boomerang effect. Come on, and I declare right now that coronavirus is coming to an end in Jesus' name. Coronavirus shall not touch you. No plague shall touch you. No evil shall befall you. And in fact, the Lord's been ministering to me a lot about the power of immunity. And I need to do another teaching about immunity, how the glory keeps you immune. It doesn't only keep you young and strong, but it keeps you immune. It keeps your system intact, which your system is actually stronger than any virus that tries to come against you. Amen. Someone say amen. This is the biblical word of God. But when you are in the glory and when you move in wisdom, then you actually are immune to every single surprise attack. In fact, you're not even surprised because the prophet and the prophetic people, you know what's about to come. Come on. Who was and is and is to come. When you're abiding in the Lord, remember Adar is Aleph Dur, which means God's wells. When you are in Adar, when you are in the Lord, you, you are in the one who was and is and is to come. You're not surprised. You're not shocked. Shoo! Rabba Baba. You're already ahead. You're already prepared. You already know because you are in the one who was and is and is to come. So no matter what comes, you don't fear. No matter what comes, you're not afraid. No matter what comes, you're already prepared. In the spirit more than you know. Someone say amen. Fire, 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 fire. I want to pray right now over you. In this month of March and Adar, you're going to march forward. New marching orders, the allotment of the Lord. I pray right now that boundary lines will fall into pleasant places. I pray right now for you and your family. Ramon, that you will receive double honor, you will receive the honor of Mordecai. You will receive 
You will be rising like Esther. I speak to all you Esthers. You're about to be recognized. I speak to all of you Esthers. You're about to be honored. I speak to all of you Esthers. You're about to come up higher to a new place, to the king's chambers, a place of intimacy. I speak to you Esthers. You're about to be summoned. I speak to you Esthers. God is releasing his Air Force One to bring you to that place. I speak to you Esthers. Fire, 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 fire. Ra -na -na -na. And I speak to you, Mordecais, you fathers, you pastors, you mothers, you apostles. I speak to you, Mordecai. What you sowed and what you did in secret to all those babies and all that nagging, God is going to honor you in public. God is about to acknowledge you. God is about to crown you. God is about to give you bounty. Come on, he has heard your cries. He has seen your tears. He has heard your prayers. And God is about to honor you. This is a month of relief, of recompense, of deliverance, of divine turnarounds, and where the allotment of the Lord is coming upon you. I secure it and I seal it. In the name and the blood of Jesus, by the word of the Lord, this month of Adar is a month where joy increases. Double joy, double strength, double power. Father, Rabo Savaredi, I pray for all my people, your people, watching right now, on the live and on the replay. I pray in this month of Adar and in this month of Purim that you will rise up and God's rising you will. Let God arise and let his enemies scatter. Let God arise and let his enemies scatter. Fire, 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 fire. Amen. Blessings to you. The remnant is rising. The new breed is rising. I love you all. Aloha from Hawaii. I hope to see you soon. I will be ministering tonight in Hawaii. And also, I want you I want to talk to you about our next webinar which is going to be in March 26. All right, I'm doing a webinar on the power of prayer, all right? It's going to be incredible. March 26 webinar the power of prayer, all right? Thanks for logging on. Love you guys, bless you guys, and I pray that you're blessed. And let me know what spoke to you the most. Or what was your highlight? What you learned? I appreciate you. I love you. Blessings. Shalom. Aloha. I'm telling you, this coronavirus is coming to an end in Jesus' name. Do not fear people of God. Be blessed. Shalom. Happy Adar. Happy Purim. Ha! Divine turnaround, recompense, relief, deliverance. Bang, bang, bang. Allotment of the Lord. It's falling for me. For you. It is falling for you. And pleasant places and the lord says i choose you pokemon i choose you i chose you you did not choose me but i chose you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last yeah you're a fruit you fruity delicious person blessings to you guys love you shalom <laughs>